Hi, I'm Stephanie McHenry, Instagram's Bake Your Feelings Pie Poet and Meaning Baker, where we take life experiences and figure out, hmm, how would I put that in a pie? And that's exactly what we're doing today, taking over your channel to bring you meaningful, relatable pie stories that you can actually eat and nourish your belly and your soul all at the same time. Today's pie is really special. It's not only beautiful and delicious, but super meaningful like everything else we do at Bake Your Feelings. This is an individual pear pie stuffed with rum custard, sprinkled with glittery turbinado sugar like it's been plucked off of a tree or a Christmas tree even. They're so special and so delicious and I show up with a basket of these at Christmas time and everyone's eyes bug out and their jaws drop and it's like plucking jewels off the Christmas tree and eating them to them. It's so much fun. And then I tell them the story it came from. This is called Lonely Christmas Pie. I have spent so many Christmases missing my kid as a divorcee and living in another city away from my family and I am not special. A lot of people enjoy, lots of loved ones enjoy and festivities at Christmas time and there's lots of goodies for those folks. And this one's for the Lonely Heart Club. This one's for the ones who have a hard time because there's a magic to baking your feelings. All the joys and the sorrows you can stick them in a pie and somehow make the intangible tangible and make it good. It's so healing and it fills up my soul and all those nooks and crannies that were achy and hollow are warm and full and peaceful. Not just full, meaningful. I couldn't be more excited to share this with you today. So let's get started. First things first, we take this glorious basket that I found at a thrift store and put it off to the side. Best way to get baskets, by the way. And we pick out our pears. I love these. They look like they're from a mold magazine, the old sepia type of color. And when you combine that with the rustic gold of the crust, it's really charming. I love it. And they're delicious, which is kind of the most important thing. I've picked out a couple of these. We're going to do one batch at a time. Each one makes about, um, well, there's four there, and I made another batch, and it makes eight total. But they're halves of pears, and we take a melon baller and scoop out the guts. So first things first, we're going to have them. Nailed it. So see that? Right in half, and I like keeping the stem. They pop out of the crust and it's really charming and authentic. It makes it look like you actually plucked it off of a tree, which not gonna lie, that's half the charm for me. I'm whimsical like that. We'll do it to the other one and we'll get that melon baller going. There we go. Now, melon baller. This part of the grain right here where the seeds collect, that's the only part that we need to remove the guts for. Everything else is nummy nummy pear that's gonna be wrapped up in that crust blanket. Start at the top, get a good angle, and curve. Start at the top, dig it in, and curve. Aren't those cute? The precision of it is not a little bit satisfying. Same for the rat last ones. Aw, this one looks like an owl. You see that? Little eyes and little beady beak. <laughs> Whoo. All right. I thought it was cute. <laughs> They're done. Now, with these four halves, I'm going to set them aside and we're gonna work on the custard. This rum custard uses rum flavoring, but if you're not in the mood for that, you can use any flavoring you want. It's a neutral-based custard, and the flavor comes from the teaspoon of the additive. So if you want something more classic, you could do vanilla, you could do a caramel-flavored one. Um, play with it. 
you know, lots of different ways to do it, but I love this rum one that makes it taste like a poached pear that's been soaked in the alcohol and cooked off the, the fun stuff and left all the good flavor and I like it for that reason. But you do you. Pie is all about personal preference, not right or wrong. That stays there. We're gonna head over to the stove and make some custard. All right. Milk flavoring, in our case here, the rum flavoring. I'm adding in the milk. I'm adding in the flavoring. I'm done with those, so I'll pop those in the sink and I'm turning on the heat to medium low. More than medium and you could curdle your milk and then you have to go back and strain the custard through a mesh strainer and it's annoying if we do it right from the beginning. No worries. While that's heating up, we get to mix these guys together. I've got my yolks separated from my whites. Save the whites for a egg white omelet breakfast later on. Make up for all the pies I'm gonna eat later. But healthy food and naughty food are all welcome together. There's no judgment here. Cornstarch, flour, and sugar with my yolks. Mixing those all together. Give you a look at that. We're gonna temper these yolks with the hot milk flavored with rum extract in a minute. Right now it's gonna look pretty flaky and chunky, but once we add a little bit of the milk, it'll make it easier to blend this together completely. And when we say temper, that's a baking vocab word for making sure that we don't throw the yolks in the hot milk too quickly and it curdles the eggs, it cooks them in the hot liquid. We add a little bit of the hot liquid to this mixture, it brings up the temperature of the eggs without cooking it. That makes it a beautiful crust, nice and smooth. Now this is totally fine for now, we're just gonna add that hot milk once it's hot enough. We're starting to get a simmery boil. It's gurgling and bubbling and having a fun time over here in the bathtub known as my frying pan. And we're gonna bring some over to that mixture of the yolks, the sugar, the cornstarch, and the flour, tempering the yolks, bringing up the temperature so they don't curdle by just plopping them in here. All right. Let's get just a little bit. Maybe a little more. Okay, you go back there, you simmer, you, let's mix you up. Oh yeah, now we're starting to get that blend. It's gone from flaky, chunky, working up to smooth, creamy, golden goodness. Come here, you. Hold it like my baby. All the bumpy bits are going away. Ya, da, da. I don't know how to bake without music. All right, we're looking pretty smooth here. It's got all the mixture brought up to temperature. That's where that tempering word came from. I'm gonna tuck this into the frying pan with the milk and the rum, bring the whole thing to a gentle boil on medium heat. I'll leave it at boil once it hits that point for about a minute just to let it thicken up. And then right before it looks perfectly thick, just, just a slightly runny, runny omelet look to it, I'll take it off because it'll keep cooking the pan just a little bit and the whole thing will be just right. Beautiful. Oh, that smell. Oh my gosh. I totally become Linda Richmond from Coffee Talk. Whenever I smell this, it's like, oh my God. I was verklempt. She was like butter. Butter in my mouth.
<laughs> what do you mean you don't become other people when you're having fun baking in the kitchen? That's weird. Okay. This is looking beautiful. Mixing it together, letting it slowly, gently come to a boil over medium heat. I don't want to rush it. Don't want it to curdle. But she's looking good. I think I'll get a better grip out of that rubber spatula. I'm going to switch this out. There we go. All those cooking bits, I can grab and pull them off the pan and keep them with the custard. So we get an even cook on this custard. There we go. Starting to look like slightly runny eggs, but smooth like a custard. All right, bringing this guy back into the bowl. Check out that consistency, guys. See that gloppiness? It's exactly what we want. Glop. I think it's a scientific word for yum. Going in my pear. Come on. Oh, these things are heavy. Ugh. Does that ever happen to you? you pull it off the stove and it's like, ah, I need to work out. I get to. Language of increase. There we go. She's looking good. Pop that back over there. Mm. No. Time out. That was good. Mm. Man. Got lipstick on my fingers too. All right, custard time. I'm going to leave this here to cool down. One of the pain points that can occur if you feel impatient and you rush yourself is you can start assembling these pear pies with hot custard or unchilled dough. And what happens is the whole thing falls apart. The hot custard will heat the crust with the chilled butter that you worked so hard to chill to keep the crust flaky. Everything has to be cold when you combine them. So I'm going to leave, leave this here and let it simmer down and get nice and room temperature at a minimum, even chilled would be better. And I can start rolling out the crust to get ready to assemble it while it's doing that. Let's get that crust. Check out my other video on pie tips and tricks for all the secrets to making a beautiful, perfect pie exactly to your preference. But today we're focused on decorating and assembling and this pie dough is already put together with fine beads of butter to make a mealy textured flake. By mealy, I mean sandy, tiny little holes in your crust versus big fat croissant like flakes, all dependent on the size of your butter bits in your dough. I'm gonna roll this guy out, send this guy over here. All oh, my little owls. <laughs> They're so cute. I gotta figure out something to do with that. Waste not, want not. Stack these and get them out of my way. I like to clean as I go to save my sanity. And now we're gonna get some flour. We're gonna do a lightly floured surface. Hold it nice and high so you get an even distribution of flour. There we go. Give myself a little flour pile when I need a quick grab of flour to flour my rolling pin. Grab my rolling pin, flour it, and now this guy. Now, I am not a pie snob. I'm a pie ambassador. If you want to make crust from scratch, I've simplified it and demystified it for you in that other video so that you can do it and feel confident and excited. But if you're stuck, go ahead and grab a store-bought crust and wrap it around these pears. As long as you're enjoying the memory with your family, it serves. First things first, Get the top so it's not too sticky, won't stick to my rolling pin. Floured both points of contact because I really don't want it to stick. I'll put that on top so nothing gets in my flour bucket. And start rolling. If you're wondering if I laminated this first, the answer is no. And by lamination, I mean folding the dough several times and chilling in between to get layers of flakes. With this, for decor, I don't want 
this to warp and mutate as the flakes bubble in the crust. If I want the most continuity between the raw dough and the baked dough, then I want less flakes, tiny flakes, no folding. I basically want it to stay right where I put it when I wrap it around the pear and not folding it and using tiny bits of butter helps me do that. Now, because I'm wrapping this around the pears, this isn't like a normal pie where I roll this into a big round circle. I'm working on roughly a rectangle so I can cut it into quarters and allocate them to four halves of a pear. Get some more flour. Berry dust. Starting to get a little shiny sticky over here. I'm using a little flour to be able to pat that down. Fix as I go. There we go. You know those methodical things that you do that are just so soothing? Rolling dough is one of those things for me. Sometimes I can't do it without hearing Barry White in the background. Just, oh yeah, baby. Feels so good. Those repetitive motion therapies. I don't have to think about anything other than this. There's peace in that. I like it. The first time I did a Christmas alone, speaking of lonely Christmas pie, I went and got sushi by my lonesome. Thought about the kid the whole time looking through old photos, who is exactly where they were supposed to be with their dad, who's awesome, being festive. If I had something like this to sort of honor the, the quiet of that moment, I think it would have felt more healing. This is taking care of ourselves, honoring the feelings, but then making it good somehow. All right, time for magic. I'm going to get my slicer. I'm going to cut this in half and then half again. And that's it for now. This is almost cool enough. I'm gonna be patient and wait for it to be cool and then we'll assemble. All right, fortune and glory friends, the time has come. We've waited for everything to chill until it's just right and now I get to assemble it into these fabulous golden enchanted pears. My custard, my rum custard, and by the way the camera crew was sneaking bits of this in the middle of shooting. They couldn't even wait. It's that special. We have a lot to look forward to when you bite into these little suckers. I love it. So this goes right in the middle and off to the side. Right in the middle and off to the side. That's because of how we wrap it. I'll show you in a sec. Right in the middle and off to the side. One more. And it is just about the right volume to spread evenly between the four. And off to the side. Come on, you. I got a crew that wants every bit. Hang on. Get in there. Okay. Oh, geez, Louise. Oh. Oh. I mean, when you're good, you're good. Dang it, that's good. All right. Mmm. Okay. Pears. I want to keep the stem on these little guys. It's so pretty when it all comes together. I'm going to look at these quarters. If you can see this, see the middle corner? That's the top of my pear. I lay the pear face down with the pitted part right in the bed of custard. That's done. Now I'm actually going to take my cutting tool and I'm going to scoop out the top like I'm doing a circle in the center of all four quadrants. 
I'm not going to use those top bits. Or maybe I will. We might save them and make some leaves out of them. That'd be a kick in the pants, wouldn't it? So, off to the side. This goes up. And you start pulling and draping. Fold and drape, fold and drape. And now the best part, take the whole thing and wrap it over. Just draping. Oh, we got a little bit of a stuck one. There we go. Now you can keep wrapping the whole thing or you can cut it off. I want one more wrap on the bottom and I'll cut that bottom. There we go. Just kind of wrapping it up like a chicken dumpling in, in dough. And by the time you're done, I'm going to stick this on my parchment paper and my big cookie sheet. All right, just like so. There we go. And you can just kind of cuddle it and shape it a little bit. This is like sculpting Play-Doh growing up. And we do that with all of them. And then we'll bring it over and we'll decorate it. We'll add the, sh the sugar and make it glitter and it'll be fun. We'll knock out all of these. Right about there. There we go. Mm, so good. go. I'll slice this. Beautiful. Okay. I'm just going to pat it with a little bit of flour because it's getting a little melted and sticky. And because this one doesn't have a stem, I'm just pinching off the top to close it up. Beautiful. Let's do it the next one. There we go. Fold and lift. Fold and lift. And then bring the whole thing up and over. Slice it off. Give it a little hug and send it off to baking land. So cute. One more. I've got a stem on this one, so I'm going to leave that hanging out and use what I got. I like how each one is a little bit unique. You know, it's more organic that way. Like the people I serve it to. Or I eat it all myself. That don't confront me. It's all welcome. I have a dry pastry brush. If I have extra flour, I just brush it off. Helps. And then slice. It's a really forgiving process because ultimately we're just trying to wrap around the whole thing. And we cut off what we don't use. You can make it hard if you want to make it hard. But by the time it's done, it's already so special looking. Like you plucked it off of a Christmas tree, cover it in some sugar and it looks all glittery. You're done. You made something beautiful. Honor what you did. There we go. All right. I'm gonna hang on to these scraps because we might make them into something fun. I'll lay them out flat, which ones I didn't gather up. There we go. I'm going to use my bench scraper to clean up just a little bit. Nailed it. Okay, much cleaner. Ready to get up close and personal with these wrapped pears. 
with the rum custard hidden inside. I'm just giving them a little gentle pat to gather any rough, bumpy edges. No science to it, just kind of giving it some love to make it look a little more uniform. And by the time you paint it with your egg wash and add the sugar, most of it gets hidden. It's nice. Okay, let's paint these guys. Egg wash, one beaten egg, whole, with half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of water to keep it from getting gloppy. We want the shine without the glop. I do the whole thing. Now, if you're curious, this is my favorite way to glaze things because the shine from the whites and the gold from the yolks come together and I want it to look golden, like a partridge in a pear tree, right? But if you want a different look, you can just separate them and play with that. An egg isn't your only way to glaze. You can use milk, you can use butter, you can do all sorts of things and they all have different effects. But if you want a classic approach, tried and true, this right here. Something about wrapping these up feels like Christmas morning wrapped up in a blanket and bringing it downstairs with me because I refuse to leave my bed. So I bring my bed with me. I guess that could have been the name for this too. But there's something about something that is called a pear and designed to be a pair, paired with another human being for connection. And it's not, it's on its own, but it's still full with a side of rum, but you get through somehow. There's meaningfulness in that for, for me. And I don't want just the happy experiences in pie. I want all the experiences in pie because when you do that, you literally make it good. Something about making the intangible tangible and making it all good is uh, bittersweet, so to speak. These are painted and ready for some more love. I'm gonna grab my turbinado sugar. I like turbinado sugar for baking. If I was going to sprinkle something and either put it in the oven for a short period of time or add it on after it's baking. I can use regular granulated sugar, but I've learned from experience that if I use regular granulated sugar and I put it in the oven for a long time, it can burn really easily. These larger grains, I'll call them, bits of sugar, they caramelize and they toast more than they burn. So it's just safer and it's so pretty. It's like sugar and brown sugar had a baby and it was a big baby called turbinado sugar. Welcome to my brain. Now with that one, I only did the bottom as though it was dipped in sugar glitter. The way I did that was by taking my bench scraper and creating a little border as I'm sprinkling. Kind of rotating it with the pear as I drop it. And then just patting the rest on and leaving it there if there's extra or just bringing it up and popping it back on. Something about that look helps me appreciate the rusticness of the crust, not lose that, while still getting the glitter of the sugar. Such a beautiful thing to pop on a plate at the end of a meal or keep in a basket to give away. I'm gonna do that with all of them. Now you can cover the whole thing in sugar if you want, make the whole thing dipped in glitter, go for it. You don't want any sugar, that's fine. Just that rustic look. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how to make leaves to go with this. Even more organic and fun sculpted. Okay, do this guy. And it's fast too, I'm not spending forever decorating. Because if I'm spending Christmas alone, I want to get back in front of the TV and watch my Christmas movies as fast as possible. I don't want to spend the whole time in the oven for just me. In the oven? Made me sound like the witch from Hansel and Gretel. Which is kind of perfect if I'm spending Christmas alone. Kind of makes me wonder if I'm going to end up that way sometimes. 
I guess that's the bitter and the sweet. But again, it's all still made good. I'm so grateful for every experience. They all serve. They all have things to learn when I have the courage to pay attention to it. And when I do, there's peace. And sometimes piece of pie, which is great. All right, she's just about done. I'm gonna add just a little bit more here and here. Ooh, you see this? How pretty is that? It's sparkly and nummy. And it tastes like rum. It's like cheating, I love it. Okay, let's make some leaves to add on to these. Now, I do a lot of sculpting with my pies. It comes with my craft and I love doing it. If you go to my Instagram at Bake Your Feelings, I do a lot of demo videos about how to sculpt with it and other cool tricks and crimps and things as well as how to's and technique. But here today, I wanna to show you some really easy ones. I'm gonna grab my stamps from my secret baking drawer. And these guys are great. You can buy them online and you just push down on the crust and then pop this guy down to create the imprint with all the grains of the leaves. And then I just attach them with the egg wash like glue. So I've got these extra scraps. That's how I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna create nice big leaves, push down, Press that, lift it up. Ta-da! I got a leaf and it's super pretty. I'm singing the song, it's my victory dance. I'm gonna put it right here at the top. Oh, and another cool thing that I like to do. I love keeping wooden chopsticks around because it helps me shape and sculpt the dough. I'm gonna use it by pressing right in the middle of the leaf and down at the base of the leaf to make it anchor in the dough and look like it's growing out of it a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to paint that too. You lose some of the grain when you paint it, but the shine is so cool. And I'm going to do the same thing for these other ones, just for kicks. we go. Cute little guy. There, press that in, get that little bend in the leaf that makes it look even more organic like it's unfurling. Just by pressing this in the middle. Simple tiny little touches. It's like, oh, ooh. it's like getting a present that's wrapped extra special. Just those little moments, those flourishes that feel entirely unnecessary and so vitally wonderful like so much of Christmas is. That looks like a good scrap. I could also take some of these scraps and make little stems on the ones that didn't have a stem. Just twist them. I'll do one of those so you can see too. Oh, that didn't work. Let's do this one. There we go. Press and release. Okay, let's stick that one right here. Let's paint it. One more. Yeah, let's do that scrap. I'm just hunting for good scraps. It's kind of fun, feeling resourceful. Again, just at the base, give that a little press, and then press it right into the top, anchoring it. There you go. Okay. Uh, All right, let's do one stem, just so you can see it. And I'm just looking for extra pieces found a nice and gnarly squiggly looking one. No rhyme or reason to it. I'm just attaching it at the top and then I'm twisting it. Look like the top of a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, I'll paint that. A 
And there you have it. Such fun assembling it together. It could be easily done with friends if you're blessed to have loved ones to spend the holidays with. And if you're on your own, you get to honor yourself. Take all that love you carry around and pour it into you because you deserve it too, especially at Christmas time. So enjoy lonely Christmas pear pie and remember that all the experiences can be made good by baking your feelings. Merry Christmas.